Thank you. Thanks, Al. Archbishop Schnur, you forgot to say I'm six foot two and 180 pounds, all right? Hundred most influential people in the world. I was moved by that until I looked at the list and I was right behind Lady Gaga. <laughs> You have made me feel very much at home this evening. I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Coming down to the hotel tonight, we drive up, and what's across the street but Saks Fifth Avenue? What about that? I would like to go to your cathedral, but I don't know if it's named St. Patrick's Cathedral or St. Peter and Change. You know, you know how famous St. Patrick's is. They, had, they have mass there every, um, every morning. When I got to New York, the uh, ministers, the ecumenical group, hosted a luncheon for me, and the uh, pastor of Christ Church Methodist on Park Avenue says to me, uh, you know, Archbishop Dolan, we welcome you to New York, but he said, I am very jealous of you and very irritated. I had only been in New York a couple weeks. I said, oh, my Lord, what's going on? How this man is upset. He said, I'm pastor of Christ Church Methodist, and he said, N not too long ago, I had a benefactor who was going to give me a million dollars come up from Philadelphia. And when he got into the cab at, uh, at the uh, Penn Station, he said to the cabbie, cabbie, take me to Christ Church. And the cabbie took him to St. Patrick's Cathedral. <laughs> and, and he said, this benefactor knew, and he said, Cabby, I told you to take me to Christ Church Cathedral. This is St. Patrick, or Christ Church Methodist. This is St. Patrick's Cathedral. And he, the cabbie turned around and said, listen, Buster, I don't know anything about religion. All I know is in New York, this is where he lives. All right? <laughs> oh. Now, I came for a lot of reasons, folks. Uh, for this great evening, and what a beautiful evening it is. Do you know how moving it is that, that the archdiocese, the seminary, would simply have a beautiful dinner like this to say thank you? Uh, this isn't very Catholic, where you invite people and they don't have to pay, all right? Um, but no, how, how moving it is, how, how, how courteous it is. But I come for a lot of reasons. First of all, because of the uh, tremendous historical significance of this great archdiocese of Cincinnati. Uh, I'm a, as Archbishop Schneur said, I'm a student of American Catholic history. I don't know if you fully appreciate the impact that the archdiocese of Cincinnati has had upon the Catholic Church in the United States and upon the Church Universal. This is one of the more historic and one of the most significant uh, dioceses in the country. When you, look at the, uh, when you look at the litany of your bishops, uh, Fenwick and Purcell and Elder and Moeller and McNicholas and Leibold and Bernadine and Polarczyk and now our beloved Archbishop Schnur, you see the kind of leaders uh, that have come from this archdiocese. By the way, you got it backwards than we have in New York. When I, you got all Germans almost, right? <laughs> When I came to the Arch, Archdiocese of New York my, at the first press conference, somebody said, you know, Archbishop Dolan, you're the 10th Archbishop of, of New York, and nine have been Irish. And thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. I'm so glad you're here. The, and so this journalist, in all seriousness, said, why do you think the Pope keeps in, uh, appointing Irishmen to be Archbishop of New York? And I said, because he's infallible. All right? <laughs> anyway, you look, you look at the archbishops you had, you look at the priestly leadership you've had, you look at the movements that have come out of this great archdiocese, and you all have something to be proud of. And so when I get an invitation from the, archbishop, from the archdiocese of Cincinnati, I want to be here because it's an honor to be associated uh, with an archdiocese of such distinction. <laughs> the second reason I wanted to come is because of my friendship with and my esteem for uh, Archbishop Schnur. 
He's right. We go way back. And I knew I liked this guy. Forty years ago when I arrived at the North American College, I was a new man. He was a third-year guy. He said, Tim, you're from St. Louis? I said, yes, I am. He said, I'm from Iowa. And he said, you and I got a lot in common because we both know that the best baseball team there is are the St. Louis Cardinals. Right? <laughs> There, there goes the capital campaign. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> but I, I consider him a brother, a friend, a model. You know the esteem that the, uh, the bishops of this country have for him. They keep electing him to offices. We still have immense appreciation for the leadership he gave our conference as, uh, as general secretary. So. That's the second reason when a man to whom I feel so close and for whom I have such admiration invites me, I want to be here. So Archbishop Schneur, it's good to be with you. Thank you for the invitation. I was also very happy that this evening, providentially, you were given the uh, alumni award to another man to whom I feel very close, uh, Father Ed Smith. Uh, you know. And to have the honor of giving him the award means a lot. He was, uh, when I was rector of the North American College in Rome, he was on the faculty. And then towards the end, I appointed him, uh, Archbishop Polarczyk, with great generosity, sacrificed him, said, you can have him, I'll give him to you for five years. But, so when it came time, he needed a new vice rector. So I called Archbishop Polarczyk and I said, would you mind if I appointed Ed Smith to be vice rector? He said, look, I gave him to you for five years. I could care less if you appointed him cook. He said, all, all I know is he's home in five years, all right? So I'm, I'm glad I had him for those five. I asked, our, now when he got the award tonight, I said to Archbishop Schnur, you know, he is such a great priest, he really ought to be a Monsignor. And um, Archbishop Schnur said, well, you know, I... I put in for these things, but the new rule in by, with Pope Francis is that a guy's got to be 65 years of age and 250 pounds. <laughs> and Ed only had one of the qualifications. <laughs> so, so that... <laughs> oh. The third reason... I, the third reason I'm delighted to be here this evening, so the prestige of your archdiocese, my friendship with Archbishop Schnur and my affection for Father Smith. The third is, you know, I would do anything. I'd go anywhere to support a seminary and priestly formation. And you all have got a humdinger here at the Athenaeum Mount St. Mary. Not only is it historical, it's a, it has an excellent reputation. You've got a winner here, and I can see now one of the reasons, because they enjoy the support of caliber Catholics like you. I knew already, I, I kind of got my radar out for good seminaries, so I already knew the great reputation that the Athenaeum and Mount St. Mary's has as a good seminary. And today, thanks to the rector, Father Benedict, I was able to spend a couple hours there and I was able to be with the seminarians. You, can, you kind of develop a sixth sense when you walk into a seminary, if you're at a good place or not. And the minute I got there, I could say there's something, there's something good going on here. And when I was able to be with your seminarians for a while, and when I saw the warmth of their reception and their interest and their sincerity, I said this place deserves the good reputation that it has. So to, to do something to help a seminary and to be able to thank all of you who support the great one you've got, that's another reason that I'm happy to be here tonight. Thank you for the support you give to an excellent seminary and keep it up because it's only getting better, all right? Thank you. <laughs> you know what, uh, as happy as I am to be here this evening, and as joyful as this evening is, this day did not start off in the most joyful, uplifting way for me. It was my very somber duty this morning to have the funeral 
of Officer Brian Moore, one of New York's finest who was shot in the face in the line of duty uh, earlier this week. I was at the wake last night, and when, uh, when I met his father and mother, we've all been in situations of wakes before, and you sometimes say, I don't know what to say. And when I met the two of them, and when they cried and I hugged, and they said, uh, we, don't, we don't really know what to say about all this, the death of our son. And I said, well, I know what to say. Greater love than this no one has than to lay down his life for his friends, which happens to be a line from the gospel that we had this morning. And as I said it, I held up my cross, and I said, I thank you. <clears throat> I thank you for giving us your son. Uh, I thank you for sacrificing your son for us. And if you wonder if anyone knows what you're going through, know that God the Father does because he gave his son who gave his life in sacrifice so that others might live. I want to talk a little bit about that, this sacrifice, this giving our own lives so that others might live. In New York, uh, the, the incident of 9-11 is still very fresh in people's minds. <clears throat> we can't get over it, and I don't know if we ever will. But one story you always hear from people who were running from those explosions, hundreds, thousands of people running as fast as they could to get away from that death and turmoil. And when you'll meet those people who were running away, they will unfailingly tell you that as they were desperately running away, there were other people running towards it. And they said, um, they said spontaneously, they yelled out, you're running the wrong way until they knew it were the police officers and the firefighters and the rescue workers who were really, in their mind, running the right way because they knew they needed to be where people needed them and they were willing to sacrifice their lives to help save others. I tell you about Officer Brian Moore and I share with you a story that continues to be told in New York about 9-11 and running the other way. Because see, that's what we need. That's the spirit we need in our priests. That's the spirit we need in our deacons. That's the spirit we need in our lay leaders and our laity who are properly formed to have positions of leadership and service within the church. And that's the spirit that is handed on at the Athenaeum in Mount St. Mary's of the West. Pope St. John Paul II said, what's worth living for is worth dying for. And he used to say to seminarians and to priests, love for Jesus and his church must be the passion of your lives. It's that passion, it's that willingness to lay down our lives to give our lives in sacrifice so that others might live that animates and inspires an officer Brian Moore, his sobbing mother and father, the people running the wrong way at 9-11 and which please God inspires our priests and leaders in the church today. Last week I had the honor of hosting <clears throat> the Archbishop of Aleppo in Syria. Not the most pleasant place to be and Archbishop Jean Bart spoke at a number of places in the Archdiocese of New York, and he didn't fail to move the people to tears. But he, he told us the story about the persecution and the destruction of his churches. But he says, I have promised my priests and I have promised my people, I will not leave. I will stay. I will be there till the end. There it is again, you see. Greater love than this no one has than to give his or her life for one's friends. Because when all is said and done, folks, the priesthood, like any act of love, whether it be marriage or other service to God, country, the church, it's really a matter of the heart, isn't it? It's a matter of passion. It's a matter of love. It's a, it's a matter of sacrifice. It's a matter of the heart. 
And I conclude by simply thanking God publicly that we have a Holy Father, we have a Pope who leads with the heart in our beloved Pope Francis. The church needs this and the church thanks God, thanks God for his example. Yep, as Archbishop Schneur said, I was, I was honored to be part of the conclave. And from the beginning, I have to admit to you, I didn't know him that well, but from the beginning, from those first memorable moments when he became Pope, it was evident to me that we've got a man of the heart. Uh, when you think of the name he chose, Francis, uh, this is Francis, the imagination, love for God and creation and especially the poor, love for nature and music and joy and, and family and friendship and community and faith and church and art. This is Francis, this is the man of the heart. When he was, <clears throat> right after he said, Abcepto, right after he told us his name, he left uh, to go into what's called the Room of Tears. That's where the new pope changes into his white cassock. You, we, we cardinals going into the conclave saw that room, and it's true. They have three different sizes of cassocks, all right? Uh, they had a small, a medium, and a large. I knew I didn't have a chance when there was no, <laughs> there was no XXL, so I knew, Dolan, you're out, all right? <clears throat> but so he went in to change, and. When he came out, when he came out in his new cassock, he, we of course all applauded and he kind of looked at us and shrugged and said, look at me. And he was then supposed to, we were supposed to come up, protocol would have it, to give him our love and allegiance. And that began to start when we saw him dash away and run, kind of run very quickly down the center aisle of the Sistine Chapel. And we all thought, where's he going? And he went, two of the cardinals, one of the cardinals was in a wheelchair, and one of the cardinals had a walker. And he knew that, and spontaneously he went down to greet those two cardinals. Now that is, that's about as a simple an act of courtesy that you can do. But would you agree with me that such simple acts, such ordinary acts of courtesy are very extraordinary today? And this is a man who spontaneously knew that. By that time, everybody was coming into the Sistine Chapel. The white smoke had gone up. And he heard, we st he started then uh, greeting us cardinals. And he picked up from the people that were coming in that it had been raining outside. So he says, brother cardinals, we're going to have supper later tonight. I'm going to have a chance to meet you. Those people have been waiting for us out there. They're soaking wet. Let's go out and see them. Another act of ordinary, ordinary courtesy a simplicity and a sincerity, a simplicity and a sincerity that has captured his heart, simple and sincere, has captured the heart of the world. You know, I live on Madison Avenue, which is the heart of PR country, marketing, commercialism. Everybody says to me, Cardinal Dolan, we love this new pope. Thanks for, thanks for saying no, so he got it. Um, <clears throat> But they'll, they'll say to me, they'll say to me, whoever does this guy's PR is really doing a good job. <laughs> Nobody's doing this guy's PR. It's all sincere. It all comes from a simple heart. These are simple, these are, are uh, magnetic gestures that flow from a passionate heart that is on fire with love and passion for God's, for God's people. He's teaching us, everybody, to lead with the heart. He's teaching us that the church has a heart. It happens to be the sacred heart of God's only begotten Son, the sacred heart of Jesus. But the church has a heart, and I praise God for the heritage of this great archdiocese of Cincinnati that has given us priests and leaders and bishops who have a heart I praise God for the Athenaeum, Mount St. Mary's of the West, that continues to farm priests and leaders who will lead from the heart in the line of an officer, Brian Moore, the police and fire and rescue who were running the wrong way on 9-11, in their minds the right way. 
the heart of Jesus Christ who said to us, greater love than this no one has than to lay down his life for another. Thank you very much. Thank you.